Hi crafty friends, welcome to today's video and to Green Day in Rainbow Week slash Fortnite. Today I'm going to make this birthday card for you using these leafy dies and some mixed media. So without further ado, we'll get stuck in. The first thing I'm going to do is prepare a bit of mixed media to die cut my leaves from. So I've got all my green Distress Oxides here, pine needles, lucky clover, cracked pistachio, bundled sage and I'm going to use the same blending brush blend on lots of greens make it blotchy and messy so that each leaf is different from all the others so we'll start with the lightest colour and get the whole bit of this done I'm not going to need all of this for leaves, but I might cut something else out from it for this card or I can put the remainder away in my little pouch of pretties. So we'll get the Lucky Clover next and blob this on here and there. Looks like I'm making some kind of uh, camouflage. <laughs> next, my pine needles, which is the darkest. don't really want the brush marks in it so I'm going to try and blend those out. And finally, let me just give that a bit of a, a clean, I'm going to go in with bundled sage, oh, said it again, bundled sage, I'm going to go in with bundled sage because to me this is the most natural of the greens, the most leaf-like, life-like green of the ones that I've got anyway. And I want that on top, I think. Next step, to give it a bit more texture, I'm gonna sp spray on a little bit of water. Lift that up and give it a dry with my hair dryer. Actually, I might just spatter on a few larger drops here and there. There wasn't much over here, so just use the end of my nozzle. Now I'm going to spritz this with some green shimmer spray. Now I've made this myself. I took a little travel water spritzer, put some water in it, about a third of the way up I guess and then added a couple of spatulas worth of luscious pigment powder so that's the pigment powder and it is shimmery and green and I give it a good shake and then spray it I've only made a small amount because I don't necessarily want lots of this and also when you make your own homemade sprays like this it won't contain any uh, growth inhibitor for things like mold or bacteria so it's not going to have a very long shelf life so i don't want to make too much so that's quite shimmery but i'm going to give it another spray i think and i always wipe the uh, nozzle before i put these things away because sometimes they can get bunged up with uh, some of the things that are in these pigment powders or shimmer sprays that you buy already made so I don't know if you can see that but there's definitely a layer of shimmer there and some nice variation so I've got my dyes I've got a fern dye I've got these two mirror images I'm just going to lie them along there try and maximize the amount I can get from this piece and then two little bits these aren't identical but they're fairly similar so they're going to work for me and I'm going to hold those down with some post-it tape post-it notes sticky notes one or the other and then run these through my die cutting machine so my card blank is made from hammered white cardstock and it is nearly eight and a half wide by five inches tall 
and I want to put a rectangle here with the leaves on top. So I'm going to die cut a piece of Hammer Dwight cardstock and then I'm going to run it through an embossing folder to give it some interesting texture. So there's the shape that's cut. Now I went into my local charity shop, the one that just sells craft supplies uh, at the weekend and spent a little bit of money on some secondhand goods. And I found this large embossing folder with a leaf pattern on it. And I think that would be perfect to emboss on the back of this. So I want to pop it about there because that's where the densest pattern is. And I'm going to have to run this through my Gemini electronic die cutting machine because it won't fit through a cuttle bug. It's, well, how big is this? It is eight inches by eight inches. And there we go. That's beautiful, that is. I might just neaten up the edge slightly by going around it with an embossing tool because that sort of squished that nice beveled edge and made it look ever so slightly ragged. But there we go, I think that'll do. That's neatened up a little bit, but that's gorgeous, I love that. That was a pound well spent. So I'm thinking that there, and then my leaves arranged on here. I'm wondering about maybe adding a little bit of ink around the edges or oh, gilding. Ooh, gilding in gold. Mm. Yeah, I think I might do that. Popping those on there I like that. But I think this actually needs a frame around it. So I can get, I think, I'll look and see if I've got the larger size. This might be too big, but we'll try and see. Oh, I think that's okay. So I think a little bit of glue on there. And that can go on there like that. I've already popped a panel of hammered white cardstock on my card blank that's a quarter of an inch smaller all the way around. So I've got my gold gilding wax here and I'm just going to Gild a little bit of these leaves to give them some highlights. I'm popping them on sticky notes, on the sticky side of the sticky notes to help keep them still so I don't accidentally damage them. I would do this on my grip mat but I'm not sure how the gilding wax will affect the grip mat because it's got all sorts of volatile chemicals in it it's wax based or what is it non-tarnishing wax gilt maybe thinned with turpentine so yeah it's definitely got that turpentine smell to it so thinking those like that then those like that over the top and then those like that and that in the middle maybe bring it all together a bit more and just glue I think for the back of these going to dip my little leaves in there bring them in a bit just so they're hanging over the edge of that leafy embossed background Now you could, if you wanted, do these, each type of leaf in a different green, that would look nice. So if you wanted a bit more variation. So you could do, say, the smaller ones in a paler green and then 
a darker green and then the darkest green in the middle that would look quite nice that would bring the attention to the middle of the cluster of leaves and that one is its little bits going over the edge of this panel again when things go over the edge they kind of bring it all together make it not look like lots of different bits stuck together but an actual thing that's been designed if you wanted a bit more in the background or if you didn't have the right embossing folder to create some texture you could die cut from vellum and stick those behind and that would give you a little bit of extra texture there so this is my sentiment birthday wishes and i want to stamp it in a straight line underneath there so i want to create a jig again it's a different type of jig this time it's just to help me line up my birthday wishes so i'm gonna put it where i want it push that up against it mark a line here where i'm going to cut make sure i get a perpendicular thingamabob. bob perpendicular line So if that's in the right place, I'll pop that in there and that should, if I, I can push that down and because of all these letters are capitals, there's nothing hanging down, I can use it to line it up and just want to get it central underneath this as well. I think that will work. I'll pick up my stamp looks like it'll work and I can get rid of this and I think I'll use pine needles because it's the darkest and again I want to make that sure that's clean up there so it doesn't go on at any of my um, die cutting and just hold that gently down to allow the ink to transfer and I'm going to do that again. This is a silicon stamp rather than a photopolymer, so sometimes they need a little bit of extra help because they get, uh, well, they don't necessarily take the ink very well. So I find it's better in that case to do a few light stamps than go in with one big attempt at a heavy stamp. So that we're almost there. I think one more will do it to get everything nice and even and not looking blotchy. So I want to add a little banner over here just to bring a bit of the white and to bind everything together. And I've got this stitch banner die and it's a bit long for what I want. So I'm going to do the old trick of partial die cutting. Just grab a bit of low tack tape and line that up exactly where I want it and run that through and I'm going to take the die line it up with the other end I can lock it lock the stitches so that it is in exactly the right place then we have a little banner perfectly sized and that's going to sit on there and I'm thinking no, I'm not going to pop it up on craft foam but I'm going to pop it up on a bit of card just to give it a lift Right, out comes the old T-square ruler again. Pop that on there in the middle. Oh, I've dropped it now. Try again. And to keep it clean and simple, I'm not going to add any finishing touches to it. I did think about making some of my own green enamel dots using the leftover bits of the green paper. I don't think I will and I did think about adding a few gold Nouveau drops but I don't think I will I think it will work just as it is I'm happy with the way that's turned out 
So there you go, that's Green Day. I do hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you a few ideas. If you'd like to share any pictures of the cards that you make, then do come along to my Facebook group. You'll find a link in the video description. And if you'd like to see more from me, do subscribe and ring that notification bell and I'll see you back here tomorrow. Right, thanks for watching. Bye for now.